pool party. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to pick it up. Well, welcome everybody out of church this evening. It's uh, good to be back. I told Sarah, I think, maybe Sunday or something, I said, man, it's weird not being in church. Yeah, because we didn't go nowhere, or we was in Gatlinburg, but uh, I, mean, I talked to a couple of people, and they said, still had a good service and things, so that's good. I'm glad Trinity got a chance to get a place to preach, you know, for a time, you know, just be able to use him. He's afraid we were mad at him. He invited me by. I know. <laughs> he but I don't it. think he was serious. No, he really, was, he really thought that he had offended somebody because we had him at the calling. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we can't keep him in the church. <laughs> I don't want to share. <laughs> He's always been that way, David. He don't like to share. <laughs> so, Oh, Sunday. Sunday. I, knew, I knew they did Sunday, but no, I just think no, they're not, not Sunday. Sunday. No, not Sunday evening. No. Well, there are any prayer requests to see. I know we've had a few come in, and some can't be here tonight. Wanda, Wanda. my poor sister, she's been in a lot of pain. Yeah, Wanda's down in her back again. we got Joe. They moved him up. Now he's waiting on surgery tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Uh, for open heart, so you know he's got to get quite a few places fixed. Uh, I seen where Jenny wrote on there a uh, prayer for her grandmother. Uh, she's fighting an infection. She's in the hospital fighting an infection. So uh, remember them uh, too. But uh, just people that can't be out with us tonight. A lot of things going on. Are already waiting on. There's, there's, there's only three, and they're wild. <laughs> <laughs> we tonight, Adam. I've got a situation I'm dealing with, and uh, we pray that God will lead me in the right direction as we deal with this. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got some. Uh, now, this maybe thank to We got the <laughs> other guy coming in, do a little bit of work here, put our uh, floor down in the church and things. So, uh, yeah, they do. Uh, if you have anything in here personal, you may want to take it out before we get this done. He, he may start Monday and it may be a week. Or it may start Tuesday or it may be a week. It depends on when the material comes in. So if you have anything personal, just make it easier on him. He won't have to move it around. Yeah. That'll be after you good till Sunday, but yeah. when we leave Sunday um, after pizza, uh, <laughs> Probably take it with you. So. Well, I'll know. I'll know by Sunday whether it's going to be next week or not. Yeah, true. It'll be in Thursday. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you know Sunday. Uh, what's up, so. I always remember my dad. He's uh, he's not doing good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. 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 I've got a praise report. You know, when we got an estimate to have this work done, I was just broken hearted. You know, I was just ripped my heart out. I asked God to send somebody our way that could help us out. And it, as the way it stands right now, it's going to be like six to seven thousand dollars cheaper than what the original estimate was. Yeah. So, praise God for that. Amen. Amen. happy to see Jonathan here Sunday. He, he came and had brother family, so yeah. that's an answered prayer. He just told me Friday, he said, I'm going to come to church, and I said, okay. Amen. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Ashley told me they were they were going to be coming back. She said she has to work every other weekend, but yeah. uh, Jonathan and the kids, girls are coming. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, let's remember our kids, you know, always been in prayer for them, and like Elijah and Mary taking on the teens and things, and, you know, uh, Missy and Karen's always back here with these little ones now, they've kind of moved in that role, but let's just keep them built up, you know, and uh, it, it is, it's good that people step in and do those things and just uh, really want to help them out, so, you know, just pray that uh, we still get them here and get the kids here and, just uh, 
we got a lot of things in the works with that. The next little while, we should <clears throat> remember everything looks like, I guess you could call it BYF or whatever, just a, a youth group, just remember that. Continue to remember Brooke. Um, she had felt pretty bad Sunday and Monday, but I think uh, yesterday and today has been better. But she'll go next week and get her shots and um, we'll just continue to remember her. And I'd like to give the Lord praise, uh, Dina and Phil Clark. Uh, Phil's been fighting cancer, and he got such a good report this week that the tumor was smaller and there wasn't anything anywhere else. And, you know, that's just, that's God. And that's what she said on her Facebook post. Yeah, yeah, he, they got to go camping while we were up there, and she said they had enjoyed it, and done good and things, so just praise the Lord for that good report. Let's keep Kenneth in our prayers too, you know, because Kenneth's got exactly the opposite. So, yeah, I'm sure that's tough on him and Donna uh, dealing with all that, you know, but Kenneth's pretty strong too, he's, but still that will take an effect on him, but. Gotta go to Cleveland uh, Tuesday, next Tuesday to meet with the anesthesiologist and have them do blood work and x rays and stuff and all that stuff. So, and then uh, the surgery will be the 25th. So, hopefully, it goes you know, quickly and it'll be good and it'll be a good recovery. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be down for months because yeah. that's driving me insane. <laughs> it's not kept that bad. It has nothing to do with me. See, she's the break for you, Queen of my Day. <laughs> she thinks you're awesome. Oh, she was just saying really nice things. Well, I was thinking she would probably say bad things. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> I was going to say, Miss Kelly. She, no, she knows the difference in when she gets in trouble and when somebody else. Now, Briar, he, he thinks of. There's a kid getting in trouble. He's in trouble too. Don't even. She's not nice. She loves you. Oh, we're well, good. And she said she's called you Stephanie five times. <laughs> <laughs> five times. I probably didn't even notice. <laughs> and then I have a little bit of a kid nose, but it That's a rambunctious. That group of kids. They're COVID kids. Pray for all of us. Stephanie's kids, Look children that she has to teach. I am yes. praying very carefully about changing schools. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make any rash decisions. <laughs> Not right now, but oh. next for the next year. <laughs> yeah. Look, don't tell me that. <laughs> You're on <laughs> camera. <laughs> Like the cutest thing in that whole school. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I,
Do I got anything? We should have remembered that uh, school in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah we did. Uh, Bobby, me and Bobby was talking about that when we got to, he was mentioning, you know, they had our school shooting down in Georgia. Killed a few and he injured a bunch. Yeah. Killed four and yeah. injured 30. Yeah, mm -hmm. four and 30. So let's just remember that, you know, that situation and that that doesn't get started back up. You know, it's it's been going away for quite some time. And, uh, well, see, when my boys that went to school there, that's yeah. 14 years old. That's, yeah, that's yeah. hard to believe, you know. I don't know why they do that. Makes you wonder, but you know, schools are, it's rough on the kids. Yeah. You're there. I'm only 39. I hadn't been out of school that long, and I thought, wow, this is a lot different. <laughs> the way that, you know, kids are not raised the way we were, parents don't make them mind. And, yeah. And they are, they are, some kids are rough on other kids. And, I mean, I, I, I understand it now. How do they get somewhat to that breaking point? I mean, they just ride, 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 and they can't take it anymore. They act on it, you know. And, and we just, we got to be in prayer for that. Be in prayer for this world. I mean, it's just, it's a place that, and you know, sometimes you hate to watch the news or yeah. see those things, or and you really get down and thinking about it, and you're like, no, it's, we're here. We still got God with us, so, you know. That's that's our big thing. Thank you, God, for being with us. Yeah. Amen. And it's like Sarah talked about. I can't believe people live like that and things, and they just don't know any better. It's all they know. And uh, if we could really, it's like Stephanie was talking, a chance to be able to talk to somebody that really don't believe in God and things, you know. And we get them opportunities. They're hard. Sometimes they don't go like we want them to go, but... But you know, when you're a part of them, you can't talk to them. Yep. It's, a. Uh, it is, you know, it's, um... I mean, it's my, my family, it's my family, so I love them to death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just pray to God and open the door and give you the mercy. Yep, that's it. I mean, that, you know, that, that's the strongest tool we've got is prayer. That's all we can turn to is prayer. And, you know, like Stephanie said, God open that door and give you the right word. You know, it, sometimes it ain't just preaching that needs to get to somebody. Sometimes it's a friendship, a love, a see an attitude. You don't know what this hand's doing to the other. And that's what turns them to it. You know, it ain't always hardcore Bible, scripture, reading, preaching to them. You know, it's, it's God's love that we show to them, the light that we can shine. And just, that's how we get people. They see us walking around throughout the world, and they say, something special about the fact they're yeah, in. You know? If you, you got to push the door open and push, even though you have good motives, it probably won't be received. No, probably not. There's so many people walking around that think they're not worthy of God's forgiveness or of His love, and they just... <laughs> giving themselves over to there's no opening and sometimes just a kind of words. I had a conversation with a man at work this week. He said, I'm trying to get ready to go, you know, I don't want to go back to church. I'm getting ready. I said, you're already ready. <laughs> that is the time to go to church. You go to church and let God deal with the thing that's wrong. <laughs> He's like, I know, I know. I was like, well, go to church Sunday. Maybe yeah, you so. Crystal because she's Crystal tells me at least once a week, I'm thinking about going to church. I know I need to go to church. I'm just waiting to decide which church. And I said, well, go to any church. Yeah, any any church. church is better than none to start yeah. with. But, Try one out. But, and for my kids. She's a little yeah. torn about, I was raised this way, but I want to go to a different church. And I've been You'll find that. them. I You'll find them. Go to one. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in some of them. I'm like, yeah. I ain't never coming back here again. And I've, yeah. And I've come in and I've been like, you know, this is it. This is comfortable. This is what. And she'll find that. Well, yeah. Mike and I didn't choose this church. It chose us. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. I wanted to go to church in Chesapeake, and they didn't answer me back. Well, yep. we were based yeah. on the different churches. And I was like, no. Nah. 
I've been to churches that looking at them on paper, they look like they were the perfect fit. And you go in and sit down and go, oh, uh -uh, this ain't yep. it. And it's hard to get up and leave the perfect church because it's not right for you. Right. I don't know if we'll ever find a perfect church. Well, right? <laughs> perfect on paper. I to be, I I, to be. Perfect on paper. <laughs> yeah. But I moved to Kansas. I did a lot of research on every church in town and read their websites. And, and we got pamphlets in the mail. And I'm reading every word. And I'm praying about it. And I was like, oh, this church will be good. Well, it wasn't. The church I went to, we dropped by. Well, we ended up in for five years. We drove by, and it was like my eyes couldn't leave the church every time we drove by. And it was just a little old church. They probably had 20 people when we started. Now, by the time we left, it was great. <laughs> they didn't have four. We didn't know that the church had split, and there was all kinds of issues. And we came in, and they were so thrilled to have strangers come in that they were just like, oh, you're here. And it was exactly what we needed because we knew nobody. But yep. I thoroughly believe God worked that out. If we had gone to one of the churches, if I'd gone to one of the churches that I wanted to go to, Richard never would have gone to church, I don't believe. But other than God showed me to come to Kansas, Richard would be saved because that's the whole difference there. But. You know, when, you when you're looking at things like that, websites and pamphlets are never going to say, oh, we're an okay church if you want to come here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we're okay except we don't want you to miss this, this, or or don't ever do this. Oh, no, I've seen the ones that don't say Don't wear this or don't wear that. You're not going to find very many that say things like that. You, you yeah. have to experience it, and you have to see, is God there? Mm -hmm. Some of them put their theology on their and website, I, and you're just like, ooh. Yeah. No, no, it's it's right. Right. yeah. And I feel like that God links you to yes. churches, not necessarily in what you think you're What you're looking for. Right, because God would want you there for a specific reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it may not be just so that you can experience all the perfect I got to talk about our church yesterday. Um, Dale come in down there, Dale Clanch, and I guess Angie had told him why I had left, and when I come back, here he come, and he's like, so your husband is a pastor up there on the hill? And, and I said, yeah. He wanted to know how this church is doing, and I said, well, when we got there, there's four people. <laughs> now there's like 40 people, and he was telling me about they used to come here when he was little. And he can remember this man and woman. He said their name. But they were so faithful to this church. And he said you would see him coming no matter the temperature or anything. Carrying a lantern. You'd see it. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he was talking about them coming from. That way? Yeah. yeah. Probably uh, uh, from all uh, yeah. 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 He said... But they would carry a lantern, and they would. This church means a lot to a lot of people around here. A lot of people started. There's a lot of people that want to see this church prosper and grow. There's some people who don't. But it's our job to make sure that we keep God the center of it, so that it, it goes the way He's supposed to. That's right. And you gotta love a man. Yeah. That's the only way you're gonna get them is love them. And when I think this church does, um, but that's you know I think to win people and and get them to come and you know be that welcoming person that says hey you know glad you're here yeah you know and and come back and. That's what we got Gavin. That's our greeter. He is our greeter. that I heard John Hagee preach one time about people not going to church they are trying to find a perfect church to go to and he said when you find that perfect church and you go it will be perfect that's right it's full of people yeah, yeah. I 
I read something the other day to quit looking for the perfect church, but go to the church with imperfect people right. who serve a perfect God. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you how we come here. I was looking for a place to go because I quit my church and I just felt like it's time me quit. It was right before I got sick. But I had no idea I was that sick when I when I left. But uh, I just felt like it was time for me leaving. And we walked in here that night and we were all just happy, you know. It just it just felt right, you know. Mm -hmm. Me and Ray and Wanda all. And Ray Ray said he fought the he fought all night long that first night, but the second night he got up for it and started. Oh, yeah. That altar. Yeah, he's <laughs> up so, there I, I was there at night because I, the night I come, the first night I come, I, I felt like I was going to get sick and I didn't want to bring it to everybody. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. stayed home so that, you know, if I was getting sick, that I wouldn't carry it to everybody. So I didn't come that, part, that night, but it just so happened somehow my daughter got it on her phone. Oh. I don't know how she done it, but she <laughs> got where he was saved, and yeah. I got to watch the whole thing, and yeah. I was so happy because I was so disappointed because I missed it, you know, because I was looking forward to him getting saved, you know, so that he needed to be, he needed, it was time for him to get saved. There's your pat on the back, I think, Department. Yeah. <laughs> what? Why are we doing this? <laughs> Sometimes it's a real struggle for Gabe, I know, yeah. especially doing it by himself. I'm happy to be able to do it. <laughs> we just don't think it's well. It's, it's a lot of pressure when you're trying to make things turn on that don't want to turn on. <laughs> upload that don't want to upload. I think it's probably dead on the night. Talking about this church. Yeah, we can go all night talking. Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> I can, you know, just look at me. You know, three hours from where I grew up down here, and I get the privilege to do uh, a Bible study with you guys every Wednesday night. I thank you for that. You know, I I try to do the best I can and, and uh, keep with the word and just kind of let. Probably well, hard being not kind of let, but just let God lead. Right. You know, so. What's that? I, I said it's probably hard being married to the teacher of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> teacher of the year. It's hard yeah. to. I think that's the bar pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking I get to go home again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was just thinking we're all going home with you because we heard about the pain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, she yeah, you, you know, they're a little, they're a little uh, mad about the uh, pineapple stuff. So, yeah, we could You are all invited. I don't know if I'm going to marry you. Everybody gets a spoon. Oh, yeah. And he absolutely is not a boy ever. I should have brought you some. <laughs> okay, so we're in Matthew six. And I think that I said somewhere down around uh, 32, 33, 34, somewhere like that. But I, I, I think we'll go, uh, let's go back. Because I, I think we ended last week, I think Teddy was kind of mentioned those about the, two, the ser serving two masters. And we, we uh, did that, you know, and talked about that. Let's go from 25 to 34 and read that. And then we'll just go over that again, okay? Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 25. Okay. Yeah, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not that life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Number 6. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Neither do they reap nor gather into bonds. Yet your <coughs> heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not are you not much better than they? Twenty-seven. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Twenty-eight. And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Twenty-nine. And yet I say unto you. 
that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall, shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So back in 25, he says, do not worry about your life. Well, we can all do that pretty easily, right? <laughs> no problem. No problem. We're good with that. This whole section is convicting. Well, um, remember... Like I said, when he's preaching this, you know, you have uh, Pharisees and Sadducees there also. And you have to remember, they're the ones that have been teaching everyone until he came. Mm -hmm. And then he teaches them like this. All right, remember, we're talking about the condition of the heart. The Jews are talking about the law. And that's it. And when we get to chapter 7, we're going to get into a lot more of that, you know, with judging and everything. But that's all they really cared about, is the law. We're, most, we're, we're the chosen ones, and we're, you know, uh, from Abraham, you know, ch ch child, children of Abraham, you know. So, um, you know, they, that's all they really cared about. And if you look at other parables that Jesus talks about and the other things that Jesus says about the Pharisees. What, what, what is he telling them about parties and stuff like that? He said, you want the good seats at the parties. Right. You want to eat, you want to drink, you want to be merry. And what does he tell them right here? Don't worry about your life. Don't worry about it. You know, I mean, I, I think we can all have countless stories in here where he's telling them, you know, talking, like I said, talking about the Pharisees, talking about the Sadducees. That's all they cared about. How many little things they have on the road? We watch The Chosen, and you see those little rabbi strings and stuff like that, and they got these big, wide rabbi things coming down, and they want everybody to see that. You know, and they're standing and they're praying and, you know, they're doing this on the street corners and, you know, all for show. Everything for show. And what does Jesus say? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about your life. Nothing. Don't worry a thing. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. And don't worry about what you're going to wear. And no wonder they didn't want to hear these things because it took away from their greatness and their perception of themselves. Yeah. So they take the focus off of the rabbis and Jesus puts it on God, you know, because he goes down through here and he says, he, I, mean, he, he, I mean, this is, you know, you said it's very convicting and it, it is, you know, for us, but it is a huge slap in the face to them. Yeah. He says, look at the birds. <laughs> look at the birds in the air. They don't sow, they don't reap, nor they gather in the barns, but the heavenly Father feeds them. Take the focus off of yourself and put it on God. Yeah. And he says, aren't you more valuable than the birds? You're way, we're way more valuable than the birds. We are called sons of God. Yeah. yeah. So maybe the Pharisees at 
to study because that they became bitter at this. Like because all their life, if you think about all their life, they have been dedicated their their, their whole being to following the law and doing what the law yeah. says. <laughs> so just think about people who are doing are sinful and are doing that they get their whole life to just sin and doing that, and then you tell them that they're wrong. <laughs> I mean, almost well, the same thing. <laughs> yeah. you know, you, Taking that away from them, that, yeah. you know that, um, and it's kind of like you're making them realize that their focus has been on the wrong thing, yeah. and they don't want to yeah. they have necessarily. Their righteousness is built on self, not on righteousness to God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all about the superficial, how you look, how you act, what you say, which none of that matters to God unless you die and become like Him. Yeah. And as you can see, you know, Jesus is starting his ministry here and everything's going on, you know, and, and uh, it's like with the temple and the sacrifices and everything like that, they just ruined it. You know, they absolutely ruined it because they took the focus off of God. They put it on a, a, a just a tradition and, hey, look at me, look at, look at what I can do. Look, I, I have this ephod on that has all these stones and look how proud I am and everything and they miss the point that the temple is is you know showing God and showing and showing Christ in the sacrifice. You know, they just they, they that, completely missed it. That's exactly people today though. That's what they want. They want somebody to look at them. Yeah. You know? And yeah, they don't want to step up. The internet's just a little bit more yes. obvious. Yes. Yes. And easier. Yes. And profitable. Yes. Yes. You know, and uh, he even goes back. Uh, Jesus says, he said, don't worry about your clothing. He said, consider the lilies of the field. Uh, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And then he goes back. And, get, and he goes right to the temple. And he says, look, he, look at even Solomon, who built the temple, who built the, the great city, you know, and everything. Even Solomon, all his glory, wasn't arraigned like them. You know, the Jews know who built the temple. Mm -hmm. so you have to understand that, you know, when he's saying this, he is pointing to that. You know, so it's even getting farther under their skin. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, you know, he's going to clothe you. And he, what, what he says, oh, ye of little faith. But I feel like God says that to me specifically. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the Pharisee. I'm not standing on the corner. But I'm also the one that's like, am I going to get through this day with these 63 children? <laughs> am I going to, you know, I, I just feel like, to walk in to the school on my day or whatever it is, it doesn't matter where I'm at, and believe that God is going to take care of it in the way that He wants to. He goes before yeah. you and prepares your way. Yeah, and, and that's good. But I also want you to realize that He's talking about material things here. Yeah. You know, He's absolutely talking about material things. I think that's one of His big, bigger focuses on that is. Material things and stature of where you're at in the world, yeah, different things like that, you know. Because he could have, Jesus himself could have put himself on the pedestal very easily, yeah. I mean, he could have easily, he could have called himself down off the cross, killed the holes in his hands, killed the holes in his feet, sucked up, backed up all his blood, and wiped away the scars on his body, yeah. If he would have done that in front of everybody there, he would have got his trophies here on earth, right? Like we read about last week, but he didn't. And, you know, and that is, it's, I, I, I was sitting there thinking about it, and I was, for the past couple of days, I've been, you know, we go to work, and of course, work is focused on money. Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's what we go to work for. But, I mean, that is like, it's like 90% of the day is typically what, or some kind of comments going around about, 
oh, can we work, you know, overtime? Or, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, just do this, do that, do that. It is, and it is just totally focused on what I'm thinking. Dang, I don't know what I've ever done. Well, you know, but in the same sense, you know, I was, I was actually, this thought came to me today. I was sitting in a chair there, and conversation was going back and forth, you know, four or five, ten people in there. And I was thinking, you know, that's, it brought back to me what we talked about, I think, last week. You know, for the love of money is the root of all evil. You yeah. Know? And, and I got, to, I just sat there and thought for myself. I thought, you know, it, that's it. It's, it's that, even that, even us that try not to do that, we still have a little bit of love for that money. At yeah. times. For sure. Mm -hmm. At times in our life. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying all the time, but. At times, we let that love of money take over, you know, and it's just like that, you know, I need a new truck, or I need a new car. Um, <laughs> dude, I really? Yeah, that, that's me. I've got four vehicles over there. That's all got license and insurance on it. I don't need another one. And, and you know, there are, that was two of them just old, you know, don't think I'm some rich person. There are two old junkers that's. Ain't worth a thousand dollars you put them together, but mm -hmm. you know, it's you love them. I do love them, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it still don't. You know, you look at it, and I, and I think about that. I'm like, I, I don't need anything else. You know, I, I've got a big truck, I need to pull something heavy, I can do that. You know, and, and I think that's what he's telling us here. You know, that's what don't, don't worry about it. You know, it. He takes care of it. Sarah called me today and she's like, hey, this much money went in the bank. I'm like, the sake of it, you know? Well, that's gone. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're there, not even expecting it, and then this gets taken care of. And On the average somebody's. person today, though, just thought you were talking about, they focus on, I want to get that over time because then I can get paid maybe $50 an hour versus my $30 an hour, and then yeah. I can go buy this or do this. They're focused on all these worldly things, which yeah. all of us, like Adam says, does at times. I mean, sure. yeah. I can be yeah. the world's worst at wanting something, but then, you know, you think, well, do I really want that, you know? Right. But people do. They focus on that, and, you know, they that's what they'll focus their whole picture on is, Oh, I've got to make this much and do this much, and I gotta buy this. And you see, it's just a, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. Yes, because once you have that much money, then you buy something else or get another loan, and then you have more bills, and then you have to figure out how to make more money so you can pay those bills, and then oh, I'm making more money, so I want to buy something else. Yep. And it's just. That's it. <laughs> and most people, no matter how much money they make, live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And if they don't get paid for a day. They can't pay their electric bill. They can't buy food. They can't. So they're a slave to those food, clothing, and shelter needs, yeah. even without wanting anything extra. Yeah, I heard something like that, or read something like that this week about you know you've you've uh, spent all your money on your wants. Now you're asking God for your needs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we do. So. But uh, that's okay. pretty. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, I've never heard. Yeah, it. <laughs> they take care of our needs. Yeah. yeah, so that's what he's talking about here. He's talking about needs. He's talking about you don't need to, uh, this, you know, these things. You don't need to worry about this. You don't need this prestige. You know, um, I was just thinking uh, before Adam started talking there about a phrase I've heard all my life, and I know you've, you've heard it too, and talking about prestige and how, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll step on some toes here, but, here, but um, you know, Christians say, you know what, I want to be a janitor in heaven. Have you guys heard that? I just want to be the janitor, you know? I want to be the janitor in heaven. I never really hear him say, you don't want to be a janitor here on earth. I want to be a servant here on earth. Well, no, I want to be the boss. You know? I make the big Yeah. Tell people what to do. So you they know? Tell me. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe I'm wrong. But Jesus says, I come to serve. He's God. I come to serve. Oh, yeah, by the way, he washed. Judas' feet. Yeah, he is the boss. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing what was going to happen. Yeah. yeah, knowing what was going to happen. It amazes me how you can do something so simple that took no real thought, but just as an act of kindness to help somebody. Yeah. And how amazed they are that you took the time 
And it, it doesn't matter what your stature is, they're, you're helping me. And, you know, thank you so much. And yeah. I, I get it a lot of work, not because of what I do, because I'm blessed to be in a position that I'm free of a lot and I can't help students. And they're like, oh, you're taking time to help me. Thank you so much. And I'm like, that's my job. That's what I do. You're driving me crazy. But, <laughs> but people are so appreciative because they're not used to people being kind and helping yeah. them without a reason. And I honestly, I, I help people a lot that I wouldn't have to. But, but it's the response from people that just makes me go, what has happened to you that this little thing is... It comes across to you. I feel the same way. Like I feel like whenever somebody at McDonald's just says, I hope you have a nice day. Oh, yeah. I'm like, really? There was one person. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm I mean, I'm serious. I'm like, when you have people that are negative all the time. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, and I feel like myself, I get negative. Okay, I'm getting off the phone. It's talking about you. But you know, that's the world we live in. Yeah. I don't know if this makes sense, but, you know, Jesus knew what Judas was going to be. And sometimes we we hold back, you know, sharing the gospel and stuff because we're like, oh, well. I'm going to receive this. Or I don't know how they are. They're not, you know. Yeah. We can't be like that. You're jumping ahead the next. Oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> you're fine. But you're fine. But yeah, we're going to get we're going to get into that uh, little discussion about that. You know, us picking, picking and choosing who we think needs yeah. the gospel yeah. and who we don't think needs yeah. the gospel. But going on with the changing of the heart, Candy, you said about uh, working the extra overtime, okay, to get the next greatest thing. What if your heart said, I want to work overtime because the lady down the, the road needs groceries? Yeah. You yeah, know, needs groceries. or she can't afford her prescriptions, or she can't. <laughs> Go ahead. So, I'm so sorry. I just had that very experience today. So, the, um, a lady that I worked with, I was eating lunch with her, and, and she was telling me that she was working after school and she has this whole mound to do it. I was like, what in the world? Why is this, you know, this is crazy. She said, well, I have my sisters and they don't. serving. Yes. You know, she's not, you know, putting putting those big robes on and all that fancy attire for herself. Yeah. You know, whatever. You know, it's the condition of the heart. And like I said, that's what we've been talking about the, the entire time, you know. Well, and it's like we were talking about doing overtime and this and that. It might not necessarily be your overtime, but just like Betty said in her Talk, she's there helping somebody and somebody's seeing that and I had that same experience a few weeks ago I was covering for somebody else she had been out due to a death in the family I worked on something and I was like the doctor was calling me and I was like okay why are they calling so she picks up and she's like oh I got your notes you already worked on that and scheduled them and I was like yeah she said well, I worked on it, but they wouldn't give me that appointment till like December or something. She said, that was great. You went the extra mile and got that appointment sooner. And I was like, that's just what I do. Yeah. You know, but she was amazed that somebody would take time to work on something for somebody else. But that's just, you know, like Betty said, that's how you let your light shine and go the extra mile and help somebody. Yeah. Then they're going to see something different in your life. And talking about pay. Last week I got my paycheck and there was more money there and I was telling Roger and he was like, well, maybe you better check. You don't want to have to pay something back. So I texted my supervisor and I was like, was there supposed to be a pay increase? She said, yeah. I said, okay, thanks. <laughs> Out of the blue, you know, and, and it, that company's not like that. So I have no idea where it stemmed from, but... We know. We That's what I do. We talked about that last week. You know? We know. I do. I try to help people the very best. And when you call these people, you'd be amazed at how many of these people are either lonely or they don't have anybody or they don't have transportation. or You know, there is so many people out there we could be helping 
It amazes me how many people don't have any family support. Mm -hmm. They have no resources, and they are at rock bottom not knowing what they're going to do next. Yeah. And I, you wouldn't think at the college, you would think these students are coming here and they, you know, they've managed to pay for school, but so many of them, I don't even know how to get to school every day. Yeah. And then, you know, you do the least little thing and they're just blown away by it. But. Well, and I can tell you that, you know, I think all of us know what it feels like to not have money. It's a scary place to be. It is. And once you start, once you start getting money, then it feels like you, you have to hold on tight to it or you want to, you don't want to get back to where you were. And so that, that kind of brings a fear. And I don't think that's. That money God. becomes your God. Yeah. Right. So that's that yeah. love where that yeah. love comes. Well, it's that worry. Yeah. You know, you're worrying, you know, about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, you know, what you're going to wear. It can also be a way of despising money in, in a way, because we're chained to it so badly. Yeah. yeah. We need it to, we need it to get vehicles so that we can get to the job, so that we can get the health insurance, so that we can get the groceries, so that we can get the doctor's visits, so that we can pay for the insurances and the taxes and this and that and that and that and the moment that you don't have any of it all goes swirling down the drain. And God's telling us right here that you don't have to have that. He provides everything on this planet that we need to survive physically. And yet we've tied ourselves to it so completely and thoroughly that the thought of not being able to have it for a moment gives us thoughts of dread and devastation. Mm -hmm. and I think it kind of goes back to Trinity's message from this weekend on faith. Mm -hmm. You know, a faith that God will take care of us, mm -hmm. but we have to make sure that we give Him um, the credit and the opportunity to do what He will do yeah. for us instead of thinking that we have to take control of it. All right, so we move down here to the 32, and this is uh, after uh, all these things the Gentiles seek. You know, so the lost, and I think we talked last week about, you know, uh, the lost when they when they're rich. I think we were, I think I was talking to you, Betty, about it. Um, uh, when they when they have all their needs met, they they feel like they don't need God. You know, so the Gentiles sinners. They seek after all these things. You know, they want that prestige. They want, to, you know, to eat and drink and be merry and have the finest clothes and, you know, all those things. But it says, for your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. All these things, all this Mercedes Benz, all this mansion, all this big, huge bank account. What things will be added to you? All them needs. That's needs. just what I was going to say. Your needs is what's going to happen. All them needs. Now, there are times, I will say, that God gives us extra because we need it for some reason. Well, absolutely. Like, oh, yeah. Think about what you do with it. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. You know how much money Solomon had? <laughs> a lot. A lot. But where is it today? You know, so there is nothing wrong when God blesses you with money. And I think it's about your attitude. It's how you use it. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. It is right. absolutely how you use it. It's right. Like he knows most of us, whether we honestly want to admit it or not, if we had all that money and had no other worries, what yeah. would happen there? Yeah. So he knows, hey, I ain't going to give Adam a million dollars because he won't need that 41 vehicle. Yeah, he won't need me. <laughs> well, you get all yeah, that money. Yeah, exactly. He won't need me. He won't, he won't need that if your car breaks down, hey, I'm going to lay hands on it and say, please, God, fix this because I ain't got the money to do it. Yeah. No, I'm just going to go pay the mechanic to do it. Yep. You know, I don't need you, God. Yeah, that goes back to yeah. That's what I was talking about. fix it. My truck, you know. <laughs> I was talking about my truck last week. You know? That reminds me of all the people that were invited to the wedding feast and wanted got married and had to 
take care of his bride and put in property and had to take care of his property. They were all busy taking care of stuff that God had given them. They didn't have time to go to the wedding feast yeah. that they were invited to. And we do the same thing. You get money, so you buy a new boat. Sorry, Adam. You buy a new boat, so now we're going to take it to the lake on Sunday. Yeah. Not that Adam does this, but you got to take it to the lake on Sunday because that's the only day you have off. Yeah. But you're spending six days a week working to pay for that new boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now you got to go enjoy it on Sunday because you put all this money into it. Mm-hmm. And the new motorcycle and the new camper and the new house. And I bought this house and now I've got to renovate it and i got to work hard to buy all the stuff to make the house beautiful. And yep. so, and the next thing you know, God has blessed you, but you're spending all your time on the stuff, uh, on the, the blessing Lord. part of it and not on the God that provided it. Yep. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell and preach, but she was yelling. You'll be camping the desk. I'm here to tell you. This is a good message for the world. Bye. 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 To seek me. Seek me first. Seek my righteousness. And don't worry about these other things. And seek me first doesn't mean hit your knees and say, God, give me this, give me this, give me this. It means, God, show me what you'd have me to do. Let me be in your will, not on your knees praying for all the things you want. Have faith and believe he'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Mike, I've made... A little bit of money. I've been laid off and out of work. And at one time, my husband and I both were laid off. The week we moved into our new house um, with a new mortgage, we both got laid off with just it, within a few months of each other. We never went hungry. I grew up dirt poor as a child. My dad worked in the woods, and we had no money. I don't. I do know how God provided. There was no money coming into that house, but we never went hungry. Never went hungry. I've made itty bitty little bit of money, minimum wage, barely. I've made really good money to do a job that was really easy. I've never gone hungry. I've never gone without any of this stuff that we just talked about. God has always provided. When I was a single mom, I um, had three kids, and occasionally I got child support, but not all the time. And I um, went in blindly to And she just decided because she was a she was also a single mom at one time and somebody helped her, so she decided to help me. That's what he said. Pray about the Lord. <laughs> pray for the Lord for that. I had the only <coughs> job that I had at that time was um, I worked for the church doing a class and I did some photography. But I just went by faith and God helped me to pay that five hundred dollar rent payment every month. But and then When you live like that and God provides like that, it just increases your faith. Yes, it does. If you had had all the money, you didn't have to worry about where you're going to rent. Now, I want this house on the hill because it's prettier and it's in the right neighborhood. We don't appreciate it as much. It's we don't serve God as much. It is good to remember. I remember growing up poor, but we didn't know we were poor. Oh, I knew we were poor. Well, I knew we were poor. I mean, we. Yeah. We had food, we, yeah. we had clothes. food, we had clothes, we had We work. took off our good clothes when we came home and put on old clothes. Mm-hmm. And no shoes. Yeah. But, you know. I always got my money. But we had a lot of, I had took a lot of love. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and, um, and my home that I grew up in wasn't a Christian home, but I had, had my grandmother and my aunts. And I knew um, we were always cared for. We were. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. always had food. Yeah. And, um. You know, it, it's not until you get out into other kids and school systems and stuff like that, you find out what you really don't have. But we didn't, we didn't know we didn't have it because yeah. we were all happy. Yeah. You know? That's true. We were attending. Usually kids come around and they've got the Nikes on. Thank you, Story. The cheapies. 
start to understand the alpha. Yeah, we didn't have Nikes, and nobody had it. Nobody <laughs> had <laughs> <the shorts. laughs> We had the Converse that wasn't what they're taking it for. Young Converse are into that. You know, don't, like. Put, don't put an age on yourself. But I, I like. <laughs> age is a number. I like yeah. when. For many years, I can say that. It was. It wasn't until I was older, but uh, like I didn't know we I didn't know we were poor. I didn't know that uh, we were the only kids that didn't have television and phones. You know, like when we got home from school, you didn't see the kids or talk to the kids until the next day. I mean, right. and then when we got older, my mom um, would always talk about how good my mom and Margie was. She always made sure. We had school clothes, and she always made sure uh, we'd have a prom dress and all that. We thought my mom and dad were, you know, we, they were giving it to us, but it was actually my mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, and that's when I buy school clothes every year. Yeah. Oh, do you? I do. For every one of my grandkids, every year. See, and they because probably. Because my mom did it for me. They probably, think, it they probably think it's their mom and dad, and they get. Oh, well, no, I take you the, know, I take the you little know, shopping day. Yeah. Which is, they just think we're having a fun day out shopping. They don't realize mom and dad really can't afford to buy all yeah. these things I need. Mean. My mom and dad couldn't. And then my mom, she always made sure. And my nana. Did you guys ever watch Little House and they only had one pair of shoes and then they had one good dress for church? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was yep. me. Yeah. Like, yeah, and so I like took like seven bags of clothes to the real shop. Yeah. <laughs> I got shoes when school started and I got Easter shoes. Yeah. And whatever shoes I picked, were the only shoes I had to wear everywhere I went, with my dresses to church, with my jeans to wherever. Those were the only shoes I had. And I was so thankful when that time broke around. I liked when Easter came early. Because you got your shoes early. Yeah. And now my kids got them. They have a pair of shoes for every outfit. Yeah. Yeah. The nerve of people doing that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, every time somebody says something about my shoes, I'm like, I don't oh, like my uh, shoes. Sorry, Lynn. <laughs> You're in on this one, Lynn. <laughs> but Lynn grew up the same way I did. We didn't have all those shoes, and now you appreciate them. I'm like that, Betty. I can remember when, like at Christmas time, you got a pair of shoes <laughs> might have been my big Christmas yeah. thing. No, underwear was great. And, and I, I can remember. Maybe Yeah. Um, then, a, maybe between maybe Brian and Macy's age, and my brother Jerry uh, being there, which he's uh, like 20 years older than me, but they gave me a Bible one year for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And, like, that just thrilled me. I still have that Bible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, then, you know, you were tickled to death with anything that you got. But, yeah, I can remember that very, very well with. You know, it might have just been, and, and I can remember my sisters talking, because they're older than me, but they might have got a pair of socks or a thing of nail polish, and they were just thrilled with it. You know, Pe people today have no idea, you know, what families used to go through. It's so true. Yeah. I mean, I feel even bad for my own kids, because, you know, they have no, there's no hope because my mom just loves to buy. That's her thing. Yeah. I don't believe it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, pull up that uh, last verse there. 33 or 34. Uh, 34. All right. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Okay. My Bible says evil means trouble. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, explain that to me. Yeah, I think mine, day, mine says uh, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Mine says let each day's trouble be enough for that day. No <laughs> worries <for> tomorrow's. <laughs> so I take that to mean there's always going to be trouble, and we should trust God enough that we don't worry about the trouble for tomorrow. Mercies are new every day. Yes. <laughs> This is the day the Lord hath made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are not. We are not promised tomorrow. Why worry about it? Okay. Well, we say that. Yeah, I think we did. We say that, but we worry. Yeah, I'm glad you don't. Where, where was this? And that's a, that's a gift to be able to say, Lord, I know you've got it. I'm not going to worry about it. Where is it?
Well, it means, I think that, you know, a lot of it means is take care of what's in front of you today. Because we'll let tomorrow take care of what we really should be doing today. You know, that if, I, if I've got my focus on this evening of what I'm going to preach Sunday morning, then what am I missing out? Yeah, you're missing the blessing. Sharing or preaching or yeah. telling something this evening. Because I'm worried about what I'm going to preach Sunday morning. Yeah. And I might as well, you know. We don't let it be 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. You know, I'm not saying that we don't prepare for tomorrow. Yeah. That's we're not promised tomorrow. But I don't worry about tomorrow. Maybe I do prepare some for tomorrow, but I don't worry about tomorrow. Well, I mean, I, I think in other places in the Bible there is you know, some preparation for, you know. Well, I mean, it, it, that's wise and frugal to, yeah. to use what God has given you in a, in a way that it's not wasteful. Yeah, absolutely. But, well, you can't say, I'm not going to worry about tomorrow, so I'm not going to plant a garden. No, no. I mean, if you have the ability and the knowledge to plant a garden, that's part of God providing for you. Right. You can plant a garden and nothing grow, or you can plant a garden and it grows like wildfire. But if you just said, I'm not going to think about tomorrow, so I'm not going to plant a garden, you miss out on the ability to bless other people with cucumbers and squash <laughs> and whatever is prolific in your garden. Well, and like Adam said, he can't wait for more. About then it's 10 or 11 on Sunday morning to start preparing his medicine. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. How many God can do that? God can do that. Five minutes before. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I just, but, I just, but yeah, I mean, I, I think, like I said, uh, you know, we, 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 when we're thinking about this, we're thinking about material things, you know, and we're, we're thinking about, you know, we're putting our focus on ourselves. You know, how can I provide for those things? And he's saying, you know, 33 there, seek first the kingdom of God. Yeah. Seek him. Seek the righteousness. Sir. And he'll give these things to you. Yeah. So, go ahead. All right, I got two subs. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I was just saying, Adam can't sit down on Thursday and write a big long sermon for Sunday that addresses all the things he's wrong that he thinks are wrong with the church. If he doesn't pray and do the prayer work preparation for Sunday, he's not going to have the message that is for the church. Yeah. It's not his job to fix the church. It's his job to follow God and preach what God gives him. Same as it's our job to follow God, seek God, and say, show me what it is you want me to do. Whatever my job is, I need to do it with the same amount or more thought preparation, prayer, that Adam would do to preach a sermon. And we don't always see our jobs in that same, and I don't mean our physical job. My job, my talent that God gave me is to be an encourager. If you've never noticed that, Stephanie tells me that as well. I've known that for years. I've known that for a lot of years, that that was my talent. Most people wouldn't consider that anything that takes any preparation. But it takes God telling me what to say to people. I have opened my mouth, believe it or not, and said things that I'm like, where'd that come from? It had to come from God mm -hmm. because it did not come from me. And it's the same thing as Adam standing up and, pray, uh, and preaching and God preaching through him. God will use us, but we have to be willing vessels and we have to do the prep work. We have to do the prayer and the Lord show me your way and Lord, your will be done and guide my footsteps and read your novel so that when things come up, and I can tell you, there are so many verses in the Bible that I could tell you exactly what it says, and I could not tell you where it is. And if you ask me, put this verse, I'm like, mm, no. But I will open my mouth, and those verses will come out down to the where they are in the Bible. That is nothing but God. And it's not anything on me. It's because I have said, God, use me wherever I go. And I, I've done that since I was, not since I was 12. I've been saved since I was 12. As an adult Christian learning how to be a Christian, that has been something I've tried to do. Guide my footsteps, guide my words, because my mouth is big and will say things that it shouldn't. If God doesn't guide my words, I get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> have I real hard thought to, but... But we rely on God to uh, spiritually feed us. Yes. And he's going to physically feed us in this. Yeah. So, you know, uh, let's... 
like I said, you know, it's a condition of the heart. We, we come to serve, you know, not to be served. That's the way Christ came. And we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, and if we do that, his promise is that, you know, we will be naked, we won't be hungry, and we won't be thirsty. You know, all those things will be taken care of. So... feeds us on Sunday mornings yeah. and we can't just sit there and eat. You know, we've got to share it. Yeah. You know, the uh, the bread and the fish multiply and it was a miracle. All right. yeah. so, and there's always something left over. Yeah, there's always something left over. Yeah. Well, baskets, I hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, I think that's why a lot of Christians are really gung-ho, they get saved, they're in the church, but then when they don't mature, they don't know what to do next, and then Satan comes in yeah. and distracts them with other things, and that's why they fall away, is they've not had that mentor. All right, then. I got to move up for you. <laughs> yeah. Here on top. I get excited. <laughs> Sunday night. 
following that because we'll do that, then the lower nursing home, then the upper nursing home. I guess that's how you call it. Hospital, nursing home, and across the street. Yeah. Well, you're across the street first, and then the hospital second. So we'll be there for a little while. But if you can make plans to be there, you will enjoy it. As long as it's open, I guess it's still it's open. open. Okay. Yeah. Pray for, uh, pray for me and Maddie uh, this coming Sunday. We're singing at our resolve. Pray for me, Maddie, and Jeff. Uh, so, yeah. Sunday morning, too, or Sunday just, evening? Just a Sunday evening. Where's that? Up towards... It's up past the Walmart and Flatwoods. Uh, yeah. It's a little ways up there. Why are you so far I know you schedule all these things. You gotta drive like four hours. Maybe it's bad. We gotta drive it. Are you scheduling all these things four hours away when you go to sing or what? Uh huh. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. It's it's the evening. Where is it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. Um, above Flatwoods, so we're not. Oh, it's. There's, I got the trouble. No, I'm going home. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord.